Steve is here to chat with us about distribution and retail strategy. Uh, he currently serves as the craft category director for Reyes Beverage, and prior to joining Reyes, he spent 15 years with Firestone Walker, and he helped develop and manage their distribution network. He created a sales team, and he stewarded the brand's marketing, and he led uh, their sales. So with that, Steve, come on up and take it away. Round of applause for Steve. Cheers. Well, it's really cool to go after uh, Marty. <laughs> We've known each other a long time and uh, camped out a little bit over, over the years. Depeche Mode, we're both Depeche Mode fans. Um, so I get to basically uh, validate a lot of the things that you said. It was really refreshing to hear that. Quick agenda, introduction about your host, distribution. Um, you signed a distributor, now what? Uh, brewery brand set up with a distributor. Engaging your distributor, we'll add to some of what Marty said and working with your distributor sales team, and we're gonna go through some questions. So there's me, we got a nice little intro from Chris. Um, I've had a fun, uh, fun career. So I've had some time in the distributor side, had some time as a brewery, uh, some great uh, memories for sure. Okay, into distribution. So distributor options, to add to some of the things that Marty um, said, I know, some of you guys have already started your distribution you know, uh, process with uh, either working with your distributor now or, or uh, adding to your network. But uh, you have your do-it-yourself self-distribution, which is probably where most of you guys have started and uh, you know, working through that. Probably one of the toughest things you'll ever do. Um, and one of the things about self-distribution is you'll get a chance to really appreciate your distributor uh, once you, you've done that and you've worked through it. Uh, direct to consumer, you guys know the brew clubs and, and now these e-sales and stuff like that are, are very popular. So distributors, you got beer, you got beer and wine, you got beer and wine liquor, you've got super specialty stuff that uh, you can do now and just um, some of it's on an app. Um, so how do you pick a distributor? To add to what Marty said as well, you got to align with your goals. You know, what are your goals? Are you you know, do you want to be the next Sierra Nevada? Are you happy being local? Are you happy just being on premise? Are you happy with a very segmented part of the uh, the, the book? Uh, are you an IPA brewery only? You know, those kind of things you got to kind of align with and make sure your distributor aligns with that as well. Um, size to your needs. Um, you know, levels of distribution. Do you need to have a whole territory covered? Like in Southern California, for example, you know, it's, it's very fragmented. You know, you've got AB wholesalers, you've got uh, Anheuser Busch wholesalers, you've got Miller Coors, you've got a whole bunch of different options. Um, so what do you need? Do you want to have more depth or are you looking to just cover kind of a market? Uh, evaluate the portfolio mix. You really have to figure out in the distributor's portfolio, how are you going to fit into that? And Marty made some great points on, on that too. I mean, if you're going to be the IPA guy, what are you going to do that's going to be different than the you know, 52 IPAs that I carry uh, in my book? How are you going to differentiate from, from, from those? Um, you need to interview the market. Uh, that's probably one of the most important things you can do. You know, go and talk to the retailers. Ask them who their favorite distributor is. Why? We used to have a whole two-page sort of uh, surveying before we went to any market in my past life. And it was really helpful. Because the retailers are going to tell you, hey, these guys are great because of this. Or, hey, these guys are great because they're great quality. They do a great job educating our staff. Um, so you need to do that. And the next thing is to interview the distributor. You know, and, and don't just, you know, I'd go to all different levels. You know, if you've got a chance to go to the top guys, go to the top guys. But see what's out there and see how they align with you and, and align with what you guys want to do. And then finally, make your decision. So what are we looking for? That's probably the big question you guys are wondering. Um, I mean, number one really is quality. You gotta have a quality product. Um, you know, we ask, uh, some of you have filled uh, out our questionnaire, I know in the, in the audience, but uh, you know, we ask the DO levels in your, in your package. DO levels. So that's, what, that's the questions that we're asking because we wanna know if you're gonna be distributed by Reyes Beverage Group, it's gotta be quality. It's gotta be a really, really good product. And we can't have our guys going out selling product that, you know, goes bad in the, in the can or goes bad in the bottle, um, you know, doesn't have a good shelf life, all those good things. So, again, number two, 
could be number one, but revenue and profit is very important. You know, make sure that you provide very good gross profit to your distributor. Um, they, they look at that, we look at that. Obviously, we're in this business to make money, as, as are you, we're a for-profit company. Um, we look at our portfolio mix and how you're gonna fit into that. Um, Company structure, we look at your company structure. How is it structured? Are you financially prepared? Are you, do you have all the tools you need? Is your, is your brewery set up? Um, do you have good contracts if you're contract brewing? Those kind of things. Number five is people. People is so important. Um, the distributors, you know, contrary to you might, might believe, those days of, of those guys building your brands are pretty far. I mean, they're far away. Um, they've got a lot of brands, they've got a lot of objectives, they need people, they need you guys helping educate them and helping them sell your brands. And that's probably the biggest one. <laughs> we need to like you. Um, three things came when I came to, to, the, uh, to this job. Um, Tom Reyes told me that uh, you've got three categories on how we pick brands. So number one, you've got to have a really good brand to, to, for us to really uh, look at you. Uh, number two, um, and, and number two, we really need to like you. Um, and, if you and number three, if you, if you have a shitty brand, uh, you, better be, uh, you, better be <laughs> you better be ready to pound, you know, walk off. And then if you have a really good brand, but you're an asshole, it, it, you really need to have a really good brand. <laughs> so, <laughs> so those are, the, those are the, 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 my rules of wisdom when, I, when we look at things, but we really need to like you. I mean, you know, if it's, this is a fun business. We're a people business. So you sign a distributor, now what? Quick basic setup. Uh, after all your paperwork's completed, you're gonna set up your sales and distribution goals. Um, Marty had a great tool format there. There's a lot of different uh, ways to do it, but that's, that's a great way to kind of start that off, especially with looking at, you know, the rate of sale and, and point of distribution. And your distributor can help you with that. We can align you with like brands that you wanna be with or aspire to be. Um, align any chain business. If you have any chain business, make sure that we know where it is, you know, what, what the distribution looks like, what the brands look like. Um, set your brand priorities by channel. You know, limit your core SKUs. Um, I've got a slide there to tell you a little bit in the future. Um, you can work on your targets with your distributors. So we know where all the bones are buried. We know exactly where the accounts are. We know, you know, by channel. We know exactly, you know, by style where, where the bones bear. We can help you build a, a really good target list for you. So I think that's, uh, you know, your marketing. You want to make sure that you start initiating your marketing, whether that's web-based, uh, your Facebook, your email blast, all that kind of stuff. And then you want to kick off your brand to the sales team, um, you know, Make sure you get all the information to them so they know how to, how to sell your brands. And then the last bit is to you know, go sell in the trade. And your, and, your, and your launch plan should be about 90 days. It should be a 90 day plan. So brewery brands set up with a distributor. Um, we're gonna go through all these real quickly. Um, Marty had some pretty good stuff there with the, uh, with the annual marketing calendar. I think that's a really good uh, thing, especially when you're starting out to really have something in that um, space. So retail channel breakout, I mean, this is how we break it out as a distributor. We break it out in chains. So basically it's supermarket, um, drug, club store, super centers, you know, Walmart. General markets, independent drug, it's liquor stores, it's that independent uh, um, gas and neighborhood grocery. We classify those as BevMo, Whole Foods, Sprouts, those kind of, those kind of uh, accounts. And so what we like to say in general market, those are, those are accounts that we can actually make some influence on. So those are, those are um, typically where you're going to be starting in if you don't have any chains. And then the on-premise, it basically is everything in, in the on-premise restaurants, taverns, and all of that. So that's how we classify the, the breakout. So brewery calendar, this is basic stuff, um, but we really need this, and we need it every year, and we need you guys to basically have you know, broken out your cores, your seasonals, um, and your special releases. So this is sort of like your benchmark of what you're gonna go to, go to market with, so we know. Um, we really don't wanna see deviations from that, you know, because we plan for these brands. We plan for your goals based upon this, and when you start adding things in, it's really difficult because we haven't budgeted for it. 
So this is what a package brand priority looks like. You're going to outline those priorities by SKU. Um, really, I mean, Marty, four or five. Used to be four or five. We actually are asking more towards three, your top three SKUs. So when you're starting out, that's really where it's going to be. I mean, in, in, in the old days, yeah, you could get five you know, full shelves and that stuff starting out. But realistically, you need to go into it looking at three SKUs and, and really going at one and then building on there for, to three. So those are all the controllable counts, which is basically that whole general market piece. And then you're going to want to define some of your single options in, in you know, general market and C, in C store format. And then your chains are going to be determined by schematics if you get them. So draft brand priorities. You know, outline your key draft priorities by SKU, same type of thing. Uh, one to three draft priorities, max, max. You know, a lot of guys come in and they go, man, I know they got this great beer and they get this portfolio of 12 different beers. I mean, it's like having your own children. What do you, what do you, who are you going to pick? You know, it's, they're, they're, I know all your beers are good and you all feel that way. And we feel that way too, but, you know, the market's, you know, just, just slammed. So you really need to focus and our guys, you know, all the brands they've got, they've got to understand what's going to be the best seller for you and should be the best seller for us. And by the way, that best seller should also equate to your top of your revenue. So whatever you guys are making in profit per barrel, that should be what we should be focusing on. So you guys are making money too. So that's such a quick marketing calendar. Just to add to it, um, you know, by month, you know, you're going to put in your new launches, whether it's a seasonal release or that kind of stuff. So we know we program into that stuff. And then you're going to want to put some some focus behind it. Whether you're going to be in the market, where you're going to do some uh, some advertising, whether you're going to be doing some market blitzes, you know, with uh, geo tracking on, on Facebook or, or any of that kind of stuff. But all that stuff should be in a nice calendar so our guys can see it, so we can build against those plans and we can incentivize and, and focus on your brands during those key periods. So I know we're going quick, so write your notes and we'll, we'll, we'll jump back in. Um, but engaging your distributor. There was this question here earlier, you know, how are you going to get your share of in, in, in the distributor? Uh, that's really tough, but, um, you know, everybody wants to get the share of mine. So basically, you know, this is it. Share of mine equals share of and percentage of revenue. It's always going to be that way. I'm sorry to tell you guys that, but that is the, that is the way it works. Um, the guys that make the most money for the distributor and have the most volume are going to get the most attention. I mean, it's, it's, it's a natural fact. So how do you do that? How do you, starting up, how are you going to get that attention? How are you even going to get them to think about your brand? So I always like to um, kind of push it. You know, uh, we used to, you know, in my old days, we were always going to be the smallest brand, always. And so just trying to figure out what this, what this totem pole looks like. I, and I always started out, we, we always started at the bottom. And uh, it was a tough place to be. I didn't like it. And, um, but I definitely got a chance to sit down and ask that question. And, and basically, they walked through all those things for me. This is how you're going to be able to do it. So it's share of heart. And... So if you want to get our, our share of heart, it's going to equal hard work, which means you're going to have to go out and help get that brand out there. It's, 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 it's not a multi-level marketing. Somebody has to sell it. You know, you've got to be out there passionate, teaching our guys how to sell the brands. And that's, um, that's critical. Um, you can gain share of heart quickly. And it's really, really, uh, I mean, there's great stories out there. I used to have a guy that was uh, never been in the beer business before he started. He worked for a pretty decent-sized brewery. And uh, within six months, became the top-selling and the top-revered salesperson in one of our business units with no experience. Why? Because he was really passionate what he did. He taught our guys how to sell his brand, and he was out in the market every day, and he recapped everything he did, and it was, it was actually incredible. I started following him every, every week just to see if it was for real, if this guy's for real, if he's really getting all those accounts, and, and, and he was. So share of heart, you know, it's, it's, it's a partnership, um, and I like that fact that you guys answered that question. So I was asked that question too, you know, who is your number one customer? One, because we give you the checks. We sign those checks and you guys get it. And so you want to basically have that, uh, that guy who gives you the checks. 
you know, on your side. You know, work your market face to face. You know, in this world of digital age, our business is still uh, people business. It's still people business. So make sure you're getting your face to face time, getting in there, talking to the guys, even showing up and during sales meetings and just saying, hey, I'm here, I'm out gonna be working. Is there any leads you want for me to go out and see this week? I mean, those are the kind of things that we like to see. Um, and communicate. You know, communicate where you've been, communicate your business. You know, even if it's uh, you know, a phone call, email, you know, texting. Um, again, narrow the plan. You know, a guy that shoots out you know, the old shotgun approach, you know, those days don't work anymore. And you gotta help with the pull. And, and that's really the brewer's responsibility. It's, the, it's, it's their responsibility to get that pull off the shelf and to help our guys you know, get that confidence. And then celebrate the wins. Um, you, gotta, you can't forget to do that. So if you get a really big account, big on-premise account, make sure you invite your distributor guys there and say, hey, I'm celebrating with you guys. We got this account, maybe we got it together, but let's celebrate that, let's have a few pints or, some, or, or whatever. So working with the distributor sales team, um, this is going to be a quick, uh, quick jaunt through. Um, but does anybody know the difference of what pro versus amateur is? Just a quick, quick hand. Danny, what is it, Danny? Salary. You get, you get what? You get green, right? You get paid, right? So there's the pro, and there's my. Amateur. I mean, they could be anything, right? You could be the same. That amateur could be just as good. But the difference is, what is the difference? They get paid. And, and that's, really, that's really it. it it's, we get paid. You guys are now professional. If you're getting paid to do this, you're a pro. So we always say that we, we do this boot camp for the distributor. You guys are getting a, the crash course. Uh, but we, we talk about what, what does it mean to be a pro. So communicates effectively. You know, weekly, monthly recaps of what your footprint w looks like. It's so important. Those weekly, those weekly times to engage of the wins, all the things you've done. You know, I've gotten some, some weekly recaps and there was four things on there. What do you think our guys think when they see something that has four things on there? Well, they were over here surfing, you know, about Tuesday and then Wednesday the surf was still good and they went surfing again. I mean, those are the kind of things that we see, and unfortunately, that's part of our industry. But we need to see those recaps because that really gives our guys confidence that when they get that placement, that it's gonna, you're going to be there to help them or you're going to be able to support those accounts. Uh, the distributor team knows their name. I mean, and I'm talking, you know, from the top down. You know, make sure your people know, you know, who our people are, and they need to know who your people are. Um, educates distributor salespeople on their brewery and brand. That is so important. You guys are the lifeblood of your brands. You guys are the people that are going to, you know, be basically anoint all the disciples. And you need to make sure that your team has that experience and can be passionate and educate our team. Um, you know, participates and supports the market and you're building relationships. I mean, that's pretty self explanatory. Um, you bleed your company culture. Um, I know that uh, Margaret here bleeds her company culture because I've, I've spent some time with her. Um, she definitely bleeds it. Um, so you're driving the priorities of your brewery. And again, those priorities need to be, you know, coming from your brewery. You guys need to sit down with your finance people and see, you know, what is the most profitable things you guys have. That's what we should be selling and we should be focusing on it. And then the last bit is to make sure you guys are having fun and, and, and fun should equal making some money. So just to add to what the amateur is, uh, checks in once in a while, you know, loves drinking at events. I mean, it's, that's fun, but it, you know, sometimes they overindulge. Sales meetings, what's that? Never been in one. You know, wear shorts and flip-flops, and I tell you, that is the truth that has happened. Guys walking in and they're coming in for a sales meeting or actually a work with, and they're coming in in shorts and flip-flops. Come on. It's, I mean, I get it being a rock star, is, you know, being, you know, as a brewer, uh, as a former rock star, you, you know, there's ways to dress, but don't, don't come in flip-flops, please. Um, the difference between ride-withs and not work-withs, um, 
I should just say, what's a ride with? Right? Um, so ride widths are um, when you get in a car and you ride with somebody and you're doing this, you know, and you're talking and you're checking your emails and when the guy goes in and stocks the shelf and checks his order and does the inventory, you're sitting in the corner going, yeah, I'll get to check with you and when you're finished, let me know so we can talk to the buyer and I'll, I'll sell. That's, that's kind of a ride with. You're not engaged. A work with is somebody who's actually doing the work with you. You know, is out there engaging, talking, hey, what's your best accounts? Where can I help you? How do I educate your, your retailers with my brand? When you're in there doing the inventory, helping the guy stock the shelf, spinning the cans, all the things that are important to this guy, because you're taking up his time, right? So it doesn't send a recap or ride with. Those things important. Email or champ. Um, just sending emails. I mean, come on. We need to make sure we get that face-to-face -face time. Uses warm samples during presentations. That's a tough one. Um, effective communication with the sales team, knowing the proper channels, you know, pick up the phone. I definitely recommend that. Uh, and then remember, emails are permanent. <laughs> so if you get, uh, you know, something you don't like, your distributor, think about it. Take a, take a day or a few hours to think about before you send it because those things are permanent. Um, sales meeting. We're going to run through this, you know, book well in advance. Send your presentations ahead so our guys have it, so you're not fumbling around trying to put the laptop on. Um, that's very helpful. I'm sure you have proper computer hookups if you do have to bring your computer. Um, make sure you have cold samples, tasting cups. It's nice to have food because these guys are going to be out in the trade. Um, and then definitely make it fun. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick on our friends at Sufferfest. Uh, Margaret actually did planking during one of our sales meetings. That made it fun. <laughs> I, I was impressed. It was about 10 minutes. Uh, work with day, right along. We can go through that, just some quick examples. You know, make sure you have a plan. Um, request specific, specific needs, uh, channel driven. Uh, make sure your priorities match. You have beer in stock. We're focusing on seasonals. Make sure we know that. Make sure you have the beer. Um, checking on it if you need to be working on your aging. Um, communicate um, to the manager prior to the workday. I mean, these are just pretty, pretty basic stuff, but you'll be surprised even some of the big guys don't, don't actually adhere to some of this stuff. So work with responsibilities. Brewer responsibility, you need to come prepared. All of that stuff needs to be ready to, and ready to go. Cold samples, tap panels, glassware, all that stuff. Um, and you should previously match what your priorities are. You know, if your priorities are, you know, your, your winter seasonal and you're focusing on your, your new uh, pale ale, that's the wrong thing to be doing during that time. Um, our responsibility is we should have a good two to three selling opportunities for you during that, that day if you've, if you've communicated ahead of time and the guys know you're coming and they can prepare. Um, best practice is, you know, again, just engage your people. Um, you know, they should, they should walk away from that work with day, knowing your priorities, knowing your brewery, knowing, knowing how to sell your brands, because that's really, you're teaching them how to do that. And I always say avoid uh, distractions. I always put office, office reply. Um, you know, I just told, I'll tell everybody I'm out for the day because I'm going to be out in the trade. Um, recap and follow up. Just make sure that this is probably one of the most important things. Um, you don't understand how many times have a great day, all these placements, and we never see a recap. Um, it's important because it's a validation, right? It's a validation of what you did and a validation of what the, the, the brewers did um, and, and the distributor guys. So you kind of can hold them accountable, too, and some of that stuff. You know, and indicate some of the things that uh, needs to be followed up on. So incentives and programs. Again, I'm not with Marty. I, you know, incentives are tough. Um, I'm just going to kind of blow through that, but you know, when you do have an incentive, make sure that time that you do your incentives, that you put your people in the market, you're focusing, because that's your time. We're going to give you that time to get those work with times. Um, make sure you have your inventory set up. Uh, you know, the worst thing that's happened in the past is we do a big incentive, everybody blows through, and the second week we were out of product. So let's uh, make sure we, we see the forecasting on that ahead. Special events and tap takeovers, just communicate, make sure that, uh, you know, you do that early. Cutting it close is, you know, 
it takes days for our guys to, to set things up, so especially new items. So make sure that you you know those requirements before you start uh, promising the world to you know uh, the new tap house. That was quick. We think we got through it. We have a few minutes left for some questions. Um, Marty. Yeah, I was going to tag team with you on this, uh, going back to the share of mine with the distributor, and I had said you're just in, in he was right, your number one customer is your distributor. So you never ask your customer of anything. You supply your customer with value. So treat your distributors with the values that you want to give them. Show up with what you want to do for them. Don't go in there asking for things. You would never ask your number one customer for anything. So think of it that way. And then um, uh, lastly, the thing that you said there that all the, the planning and the recaps and uh, the information they need, ask the distributor what language you should be using. Do they have a template for recaps so it looks like everybody else's? Don't send random emails in your own language. Use professional language all the time. Emails last forever. It's not It's true. Off. I had fun. Killed it. Never, ever <laughs> used killed it. Ever. <laughs> um, yeah, so use their templates, their language. That's good advice. Are there any other questions out there? We'll go right here first and then. Do you have a CE uh, supplier rep ratio that you'd like to see for both a, a brand starting out and then a brand effort has been established? God, it'd be like five CEs for every rep. <laughs> no, I think it really depends. I think it depends on you and, and your brands and how, because it's an investment. I mean, in my old days, it was 30,000 CEs per rep to break even. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's a lot of cases, right? Um, it's probably higher these days. So you, you, people are investment and, you know, hire well. Uh, hire, one good person is better than three bad people or moderate people. One really good person can make a big difference. So there really isn't any formula. I mean, we have some people that are, have a lot of people out there and they're just starting out. Um, that's a big investment. And we do recognize that at distributor. And we, we do take that in consideration. Yeah, there's a question. I had two questions. One was just on the uh, total wine. I thought it was interesting you had it listed under independent versus chains. I was just curious on that. And then secondly, uh, for your sales team, how many days a month do you want them doing, you know, ride along, work along versus out the market by the, you know, without a, a brand with them? Okay, good question. So total wine, pretty much they authorize everything, right? So, um, <laughs> You know, you're going to have an opportunity to get in there. So those are called, we call those controllable accounts. We, they are technically a chain, but we, you know, you can go in and get that distribution yourself. We can get the distribution. It's pretty easily to get just getting a placement on the shelf. So we, we call those controllable accounts. Grocery channel is really that chain where it's, you know, full schematic. You know, you've got that locked in location. Um, and then the, uh, what was it called? Right along, yeah. So we don't we don't do ride-alongs anymore. We do work with, right? Right, right. Well, we just just don't do don't say ride-alongs. So work with talk work with. It really depends on on the timing, you know. And you know, again, it's that a little bit of that sure mind. Um, they're going to be more off to do work with that aren't equated to the whatever the business objectives for that month is, based on your ability and your success and and your um, that share of heart. You know, you might get that extra opportunity to get in there versus some other guy that doesn't have that share of heart. Right. So it really is going to depend on you, you know, pressing on them um, when you don't have anything on the deck for that incentive. They're focusing on those MBOs, those monthly business objectives. That's what they're focusing on during those months. So getting that work with time during that time is going to be a little bit difficult. But when you do get on that programming, which you should, um, that's when you bring all the troops in, brewer, everybody in, in and try to really blitz the market during those times. Yeah, we found our most successful days are work, you know, work along. But I, I was wondering, like, if your guys, would you have your guys going to work along every day of the month if they could with the right brands? No. They got to get they got to get stuff, you know, just basic stuff done. There's 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 days that are that are easier than others. Some are bigger days on the guys' router. It, it really depends. You know, on premise can be any time. You know, typically, it really depends. Awesome. And one final question here. When you're interviewing a distributor, you mentioned you want to go through the organization, not just you know brand manager and um, higher ups. Who would you target other than like the people you normally see? 
From your point of view? Yeah, as a, as a supplier, I'm trying to figure out which distributors to go full service for. Um, I mean, I think you need to see everybody's structure. I think you need to look and see, first of all, understand what the companies that you're looking at, you know, if you're specifically for you guys, a lot of you guys have cold storage, right? Cold storage requirements. That's probably should be the first thing you look at on quality side. You know, I, I was at a distributor one time and they, they were a Pepsi distributor and they were one of the top guys in the market. They didn't even have a cold box. All their beer was warm. So I, I basically said, hey, look, I don't want to waste your time. This is our, we can't be here because our beer's got to be refrigerated. So. Is there a reasonable amount, like, you, want to, you don't necessarily want to push the limits of taking too much of their time on a small brand, but you'd say brand manager and then it's reasonable ask for two introductions to. Yeah. Hopefully they have somebody that's, uh, you know, brand innovation, somebody who can, um, you know, hear your story um, that that would basically say, okay, that's the first step, you know, what's the next step typically, then they'd probably invite some of their decision makers in, hey, this is a brand we want to take on, and then you'll probably go through a process. Some guys are just hungry for brands and they're going to say, hey, we like what you're doing and we're going to take you right on. So just always be wary and, and understand how often are they picking up new brands? Are they brand collecting? You know, that's, that's th something you really have to watch out for. Awesome. Um, we're just about out of time. Right. So I will encourage you guys to pick his brain uh, after the final presentation here and over beers at lunch.